In my last frame trapping video, Frame Trapping for Dummies, we described the concept of frame trapping from the ground up, from how frame data works in the first place, all the way to demonstrating frame traps in actual ranked matches. The problem is that video wasn't a complete resource, and that's what I want to provide to you today. I want to fill in all the holes, pause, of the knowledge you might be missing. So feel free to jump to the timestamps below if you need a specific concept. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about the frame traps originally. We're going to talk about frame traps on hit. We're going to talk about mental frames, and then we're going to show you how you can find all your frame traps. Okay, it's going to be really exciting. If you feel for like jumping to the summary at the end, please leave a like and a comment. If you have nothing to say, please leave an emoji. That helps me out a ton. That's about it. Let's get right into it. So, I have the Dragonov bot set to jab me in retaliation. The reason I have that is because the jab is generally seen in Tekken as the fastest move most characters can do. We'll cover the exceptions here, but we usually calculate our frame traps based on the jab. Jab is 10 frames, Steve's back 1 is a high reward counter hit move that's 13 frames, and conveniently his up back 2 is plus 3 on block. We hold back because if you don't, he goes into Lionheart stance, right? He does a little dance. So we hold back so he doesn't do that. Let's demonstrate this, okay? Boom. Steve does up back two on block. He's now plus three. Dragonov jabs in response. If I hit back one here, I counter hit Dragonov. It trades and he dies. Here's the math behind that. You can think of it in two ways. Here's the first way, but I'll show you the way I think about it right after this. You can think of the jab as 13 frames. You take Steve's plus three advantage and add it by thereby slowing down the speed of the jab, right? More frames is slower. So it's now a 13 frame jab if you factor in Steve's plus three advantage. Okay, that's why they trade. They're both 13 frames. If you want to think about the way I do, it's uh, applying the math to the other side. So you could think of Steve's back one being sped up or happening sooner by three frames, right? So now it's a 10 frame back one matching Dragonov's 10 frame jab. The reason I like to think of it this way is because it makes the math easier for finding out what frame traps what. So if I know one character has a really strong 11 frame option, I don't have to take 11 and then plus all these different numbers. I just say, okay, in this situation plus three, I know all of my options that are faster than 11 frames. That's how I like to think of it. Pick whatever's easier for you. That's just a review of the first concept or the very basics of frame trapping. Let's talk about some of the exceptions. So jabs are 10 frames, but there are a lot of other options that are faster. These are the generic ones. I'll talk about character specific ones a little later, but um, parry and reversal comes out in five frames. Uh, the I here means impact. So it's, it's, it's the same thing as saying five frames of startup. Say like it comes out uh, at a five frame impact, right? Or in five frames, okay? Armor and heat burst are seven frames fast. Rage art comes out on frame eight and jump status moves happen on frame nine. So because of this, we'll have to use a different frame trap, okay? Instead of using up back two, I'm gonna use running two. I need more plus frames to frame trap these options because they're faster than the jab. Let's set Dragonov to do his rage art, okay? If I try to do this up back two back one, I'm getting rage arted and dying, right? And the math should make sense, right? Because I was frame trapping, I was trading with a 10 frame move. There's no way I'm gonna outpace an eight frame move. So instead we're gonna use wall running two and we'll cover more of these situations. So, uh, if the Rage Art is eight frames, right? And we trade with it, we lose. So that makes sense, right? Uh, Steve's one plus two, the Sonic Fang, will trade with Rage Art. Trades with Rage Art, okay? So if we wanna beat it, we'll have to use the next fastest option, his down forward one. Down forward one comes out in 13 frames. So if I do running two into 13 frame move, it beats the Rage Art. Nice. So that's how we know that Rage Art is 8 frames and we have to beat it with a 7 frame move, right? Unfortunately, if Dragonov does an armor move, we trade once again, which means the armor move will come out. Depending on the move you pick, you might not be able to block this in time. So luckily, Steve can block here. That's a slower move, so that's uh, not really a fair comparison. But as you can see, it's not always the case that you'll be able to block in time. Down forward one, right? Um, so this trades with Power Crush. Uh, now the parry being frame 5 makes it really difficult to deal with. I'm going to set Dragonov to parry here. If I do down forward 1 here, which I was doing before, he parries me. 
If I do 2-1, which is frame 6, I still lose to parry, right? 2-1 would beat the power crush, but it still loses to the parry. So the only way I can really beat this is with a jab or a jab combo. Um, but yeah, parry is a very strong option for that reason. If you expect a parry, you should probably let him do it and then whiff punish. Okay. Uh, last thing to cover is the jump status move. And this one is even more uh, difficult to show, so I have to use a different example, okay? So, to cover the jump status move, let's say I use the running two, for example, right? If I do down one, my down one is 16 frames. You can see that here, down one is 16 frames. So it comes out frame eight. Wait, sorry. It comes out frame eight in a plus eight situation. But if I were to apply that here in the uh, while running two situation, subtract six frames, it comes out on frame 10, right? And if jump status is frame nine, that is why the down one gets beat, okay? So I have to use a different situation. I'm gonna go with the situation where I hit a jab on hit, right? Instead of on block. So if I jab here and then do down one, I stop Dragonov before he does the jumping attack, right? If I do it exactly in frame. If I delay it even one frame, I lose, right? The traps jump, right? If I choose down two, which is one frame slower, he jumps over it. So Dragonov's up forward three is not the scariest move, but this covers like Brian Orbital, uh, Lars Orbital. It covers hop kicks. So this is really, really important to understand how to trap the nine frame jump status as well. Okay, this is a quick summary of all of that. Let's go to the next section. Now, this one's really fun. Uh... Oh, sorry. Before the next section, we'll talk about the exceptions, okay? So, um, Leroy's Hermit Parry is frame 3. Yoshimitsu's Flash is frame 6. Yoshi's No Sword Stance Flash is frame 8. And Xiaoyu's Back 1 is also frame 8. So these are characters, there are others as well, or there may be others in the future, that break the rules of the 10-frame jab being the fastest move, okay? Great. So that was all the basics of frame trapping on block. Let's talk about frame trapping on hit. Now, we did technically do the jab on hit, but I think demonstrating this with Jin is much more effective, right? Jin does have plus frame moves on block. He has the electric. Uh, he has running three. But Jin has a lot of situations where he benefits from frame trapping on hit. Just for the sake of example, I just mentioned it. Running three is plus six. And uh, electric is plus... Oh, no, that's a wind god fist. Electric is plus five. So he does have access to a lot of good plus frames. But if you're a beginner, it may be harder to do these techniques and pull them off. So let's talk about the ones on hit. I have to set Dragon off to jab again. Fast high attack. Okay. So again, uh, this situation is going to look really similar to Steve's, actually. Because we're doing a 13 frame move as our frame trapping move. And we're doing it from a plus three situation. So just look at this for now. Jin's down back four is plus three. So if Dragonov decides to jab, it trades with Jin's standing four. And this is actually better than if he just lands a counter hit, right? So if, if he lands a counter hit, let me uh, set Dragonov to do a different attack that's a bit slower. Say Dragonov responds with a down forward one. And I turn on so that he actually executes it. <laughs> Jin gets a guaranteed 13 frame move, right? That's kind of the benefit of this. He's plus 13 in the frame data, so he gets a 13 frame move. 1 plus 2 is usually preferred because it's a heat engager. But there's a unique situation where if he trades with a jab, look at the frame data here. He's plus 27. He could do a del He could do a delayed hop kick to guarantee a full combo. So Jin actually likes trading with a jab here unless he dies, right? So the down back four is a quick way to access plus frames. This is why plus frame lows are so good, is because your opponents usually stand blocking. You get plus frames, and if they make a dumb decision, they get launched, right? Plus frames on lows are really, really nice. Brian has these, um, and Jin clearly has one here. They're not super common, but for the characters that do have them, they're really, really good. Another situation to look at is Jin's 2-1. Jin's 2-1 is plus six on hit. Let me make sure Dragonov stops blocking so we can actually see it, FDX. Plus six on hit. Coincidentally, Jin's forward four is a 16 frame counter hit launcher. So after two one on hit, you can frame trap a jab by hitting forward four. 
and getting a full launch after. Super nice, right? So at a low level, just do the frame trap. At a high level, you can build the mind game off of this. If they know that you're going to frame trap them with this launching counter hit mid that happens to be safe as well, it changes their options. And we'll talk about that later, okay? Frame traps on hit are very, very valuable. There's another layer here, and this is very, very advanced, but high level players uh, will, frame trapping, will frame trap off their jab and their down forward one and other quick pokes. So your one jab and DF1, okay? So I'm gonna show you a quick drill how to demonstrate that and then we'll, or how to practice that and then we'll move on. Go to defensive train, uh, no, yes. Go to offense training, set your opponent to random block, okay? Set your opponent to random block. So if Dragunov blocks normally, do nothing. Just continue blocking, right? If he gets hit, which we'll see how the random block pays off there, then do your frame trap, okay? So I'm gonna do it specifically with 2-1 at first to build up to this. 2-1, if he blocks it, I'm gonna do nothing. If he gets hit, I'll frame trap with forward four. Then you can build up to doing it with one jab. If my one jab hits, I'll do forward four. If it's blocked, I'll just block. And then down forward one is plus four, so let me write this out. One jab is plus eight on hit, down forward one is plus uh, four on hit. So, um, practice confirming that you actually hit them before you do your frame trap, right? So, the frame trap here for down forward one is uh, standing four. Frame trap for one jab is forward four. And if you don't play Jin, um, there's ways to adapt this to your character. And we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, at the end of the video. But here, my drill is going to be to frame trap Dragonov responding only when I see the hit spark happen. This is pretty hard. This is like higher level stuff, like tournament level player stuff. So don't worry if this is difficult. This is something you should reach for down the road, okay? Let's move on to the next topic. What if your frame traps aren't even working? I want to talk about this in a layered way. So in fighting games, we talk about layers as mind games or mind games in the form of layers, okay? You talk about your option as layer one, layer two is your opponent's counter, Layer three is your counter to their counter. And by the time you reach layer four, it wraps back around, okay? So let's talk about it in the context of frame traps. Very, very basics. I do a frame trapping move and they mash and die. What, why did he, oh, he did random block, okay. Standing block. I do a frame trap and they die, right? Classic example, we love that. That's ideal. If they just die every time, that's perfect. But say you start reaching higher ranks or you're fighting somebody who has a bit more um, comfort in the game or pattern recognition and they start blocking. All right, what happens if they start blocking? So I'm gonna set Dragon off to just stand block twice. He takes the minus three and then he blocks. Now I'm minus nine. It's not my turn anymore. And if I'm fighting an opponent who is very, very patient, then I just keep giving up my turn on minus nine. They get a mix up on me, okay? so. Giving up your turn over and over and over again uh, is puts yourself in a bad position over and over and over again, right? At minus nine, Dragonov can have his way with me. Pause. Check this out. Uh, I'm going to set it to defensive training. Um, actually, no, I have to set it to punish. I'm going to set Dragonov instead of punishing with a quick move, I'm going to let him do a frame trap, right? Right? He's going to do this. Let's see what happens. Say uh, we've completed the frame trap, he blocks this move, and uh, now he's minus nine, or I'm minus nine, he's plus nine, right? This is a 22 frame move. So at minus nine, if I try to down forward one, I'm getting blown up. Either he gets a free stomp there, or if I decide to block, he frame traps me here. This mid is plus six on block. So giving up my turn, as I'm sure you felt in game, is pretty scary, right? If they continue blocking your move and you keep going minus nine, or however un unsafe your frame trapping move is, you risk dying, right? You, you are putting yourself in a bad situation over and over. So what's the counterplay to that? Instead of spamming your plus frame uh, trapping move, you know they're blocking. So take advantage of the fact that you know they're blocking, right? Let's look at this. I'm going to set Dragon off to stand block twice because we know he's going to block. Instead of going minus nine, as I just said, you have a few options. 
You know he's going to block. You could do a mix-up. Right? That's high value. You could do a plus frame move again. Right? It could either be the same low, or you could do like a higher plus frame move. Plus six. You could do this into electric. Plus five. Tons of options, okay? Even as simple as a jab. Plus one. You could go plus again and continue the pressure. You can also do nothing. And I think this is actually the strongest one at low level, even through blue ranks. And I have a demonstration of this later at the end of the video through a replay. If you do nothing with your plus frames, they might think that it's their turn again. Oh, he did nothing. I I'm safe to retaliate. Why don't I just, why don't I just challenge him again? Do nothing, right? Do nothing. And then I block. Then he plays his turn. Do nothing. He plays his turn. The third time, or the fourth time, or fifth time, or whatever, I finally decide to frame trap him. Now he dies. By blocking, I didn't lose much. But now that he mashed, he's exposing himself to the frame trap. So, at low level, mid level, even high level, doing your frame trap, and or your plus frame move, and then doing nothing is so good. Keep that in mind. Now... Layer four is they mash to stop the mix-up, right? So if you're doing nothing or if you're doing a mix-up, it's usually too slow to frame trap them. So let's say I set Dragon off to do a fast move again. Say I just set him to do a down forward two. Actually, it doesn't even have to be super fast. It could be uh, uh, a launcher, 15 frame launcher, right? If I try to do a double low, he beats me, right? I'm only plus three. I don't have that much advantage. My 20 frame move is going to lose to his 15 frame move if I'm plus three, because this is only coming out at uh, 17 frames, right? Again, if the math is confusing, definitely do some of it on your own. That'll help out build the intuition and let you get faster at the mental math, right? Um, but if they mash to stop your mix up, you're back at layer one where you just do the plus frame move and do your frame trap, right? So I should say do the, the plus frame move, do the frame trap, they mash and die, right? That's layer one. You have to trap them, okay? That covers the very, very basic mind game of how frame traps interact. And in my opinion, the best way to do it is do a lot of nothing and then do a lot of frame trap because by doing nothing, you will incentivize them to mash, either to stop a mix-up or just to take their turn. Then you could just go back to doing a basic frame trap. It's so safe and it's so effective. Doing a mix-up makes it a bit obvious Doing a plus frame move again is kind of putting yourself at risk, but doing nothing is so strong, okay? You take nothing else from the video, do nothing, and frame trap is so good. I've hammered that point away enough. Let's go to the next thing. Mental frame traps, okay? Now, mental frames are built on the idea that your strings have extensions, and your opponent knows that, and they're going to block them. So at low level, this is worthless. Your opponent does not know that your string has an extension. They're going to mash every time. Especially if your string has a little delay. See that? Jin's 214. Slight delay. Worthless at low level. Don't even do this, okay? If you're playing... I have a video of this too. Even in like blue rank. I could just do 2-1 sometimes. Do the fourth hit. Which is actually a bit of an extension of this do nothing concept that I'll talk about in a little bit, okay? But don't spam this at super low like don't try to play mental frames at red rank don't try to play mental frames at purple rank just do your string sometimes and then finish it sometimes everybody will die okay but i said we talk about it in a structured way let's look at the layers of this mind game okay layer one two three and layer four wraps around a layer one okay layer one do or de delay the string they will mash and die okay well not if the second hit whiffs right the nice part about Jin's string is that it's safe, right? And it has this counter hit knockdown. But some characters have even higher reward ones. If you fought a Dragonov, you've seen a bunch of these. He does this. And then he does the third hit, right? You've seen this happen. I know you have, right? You block the first two. I mash on the third and I die. That leads to a full combo, okay? Every character pretty much has strings like this, okay? So this is a mind game that will apply across any character. Layer one, do the string, they mash and die. Right, and if you're not sure they're gonna mash, just do part of the string and see what happens. Oh, I see he's mashing all the time. Now that I know that, finish the string, he's dead. Layer two, your opponent keeps blocking. This is like high level shit, okay? Like, I know you probably don't see this very often, but what if they just keep blocking? 
I'm doing this. Now I'm going minus nine. This is the same situation we saw before. If you go minus nine and they know that you're going minus nine, they'll just wait and then beat your ass after you go minus nine. Right? So like, uh, I think I have to finish it here. No, nope. I have to do it like this. Because of the bot, I have to do it in a way where he blocks the hit without backdashing. Dragon off. It might not be possible to... Oh, there we go. It might not be possible to demonstrate on the bot because of his backdash. But the concept is the same as the previous one. He blocks the third hit, I go minus nine, and then he just plays his frame advantage after. And now I'm in a shitty situation, okay? Worse, if you're a character like Dragonov, you might do the third hit and actually be literally unsafe. So if Dragonov does this three string mix up, I get a true punish on him. He goes minus 14 on that last hit. Just showing it one more time. Two hits. Fourth hit, he's minus 14. I get a real punish on him. You can get a better punish than just do that, but you know. Demonstrating the concept. That's layer two. So, just like with true frame traps, layer three looks very similar. Layer three looks very, very similar. Just don't finish the string. I know they're gonna block, right? So instead of going minus every time, if they're not gonna fall for it, let's advance the mind game. Two, one, stop. I'm minus three. Technically, it's not my turn, right? I'm at disadvantage, but I know he's gonna block. I'm making a read that he's gonna block. Mental frame advantage, because I think he's gonna block respecting the third hit. Either I'm guessing or he's shown me evidence. Ideally, you would do it based on evidence, right? Okay, same three options as with the true plus frame mix-up, okay? Same three options here. These are true plus frames. These are mental plus frames. Do a mix-up, do it again, or do nothing. You can gauge their response. Especially with the do nothing technique, just like in the previous example, they might mash and you get to collect your reward with that call out. Okay. Now, if you do something, if you're less, uh, the, the, what's scary about this took a while to formulate my thoughts. What's scary about this versus true plus frames is that you are technically minus, right? So if you decide to play around too much, you might get blown up. Let me show a quick example. It's not gonna be super scary, right? It's not gonna be super scary, but if I do 2-1, and then I try to 2-1 again on a slight delay, he actually beats me with that down forward one. I'm minus three, he does a 13 frame move. It's a bit scarier if he does a high reward move, like that down forward two. That's not a down forward two. If he does a down forward two, right? If I slightly delay, suddenly, it's easier for him to hit his move because I'm minus three. So the layer four gets a lot stronger because you don't have true plus frames to back up your mind game. You are at technical disadvantage, banking on the fact that they're afraid and want to block. If they have no fear and do not care, you will probably die, <laughs> okay? So this is why true plus frames are better, or you can take advantage of the mental frames here. If I just do nothing and I know he's gonna do that, this is a minus 12 down forward too. I get a punish. Okay, so mental frames are not worthless, but they're definitely more useful at a higher level. We want to talk about finding your frame traps, but before we do that, let me show you a replay that demonstrates these layered mind games in action. I recorded this right before we started recording this video, and it was a great example, okay? I'm actually fighting a dragon off as Jin. It was, that was perfect. And I don't get to demonstrate the true plus frames a lot. But if you've been following along this whole time, you'll know that uh, the mind game plays out similar. It's just mental frames are more risky because you don't have objective advantage, right? You have subjective advantage based on your opponent's mind state. Watch my gameplay here. We'll do a lot of replays, but I want to just play it out straight through at first. This is our third game, right? So I've seen a bit of his habits and a bit of his other uh, behaviors. So for example, that's how I knew how to block low there. In the first set, he killed me with like six of those lows in a row. Right away, look at what happened here. 2-1, do nothing. What did he do? He backdashed, okay? This is deep analysis, but it's really worth doing. 2-1, he backdashed. I did nothing, right? This is that do nothing technique. Next time, 2-1, he mashed an armor move, right? So I do or delay the string, they mash and die. Let's check it out, let's keep going. Jin's wall splat, so he gets a full combo if you're not a scrub, like me. Okay, I didn't punish that. There we go. What did, what did I just do here? 2-1, do nothing. 2-1, do nothing. 
2-1 and it hits him trying to jab, right? So in this space between the do nothing, he actually tried to attack me. I finish the string, I go minus nine, so I just block. 2-1, 2-1. Okay, he beat me up here, but notice how much damage I got just doing 2-1. And then I kill him with 2-1. So Jin is an exceptional example here because his is safe throughout. Um, most characters will be taking a bit more risk, but again, showing the example to accelerate sharing how the mind game works. Dragonov's jabbing me, I'm just blocking. Nice. There's a Dragonov string that has three hits, right? This is a common one too, one, three, two. If I mash here, I die, so I just block. Back to the two one mind games. Okay, here's another great example. Two one, do the four, I'm blocking. And then I get a punish. What do I do right away after I survive this? I get blown up by his heat engage dash co heat dash combo. <laughs> that is a ton of damage. There's lots of ways to lose outside of these, right? But we're going to go right back to the concept right away. Block punish on the low. Okay. Doing a fancy. Oh, wait. I get a nasty combo here. No, wait. I dropped the combo. I lied. It's okay. More 2 1. I finish the string, break the throw, finish the string again. He's chilling. I know he's chilling, right? So I'm going to use that information. If he's chilling next time, maybe I won't finish the string. I actually don't remember what I did, so we'll see what I did. Okay. I ran into that. Nice. Little timing catch by him. Two one. Okay. Notice this. Notice this interaction. This is actually really cool. This is actually a really cool interaction too. So I did two one and dash forward. He did nothing, and then he beat me on a timing because I had to run forward. He did a back dash. Okay. This is one of those Tekken two hundred one concepts, like back dashing to create space. That'll come back later. For now, we're just doing frame traps. 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. He cracked. Why did he crack? I don't know. It's impossible to fully download your opponent's intentions, okay? But if you play solid with like layer one where you just do the string, which happens to be safe, or you do nothing, you will just get opportunities if they decide to make a mistake. So here, 2-1, it hit him. He decides to block this time. Then he felt like retaliating, so he died. 2-1, he mashed again. I'm not sure why he did that, but I have the information I need. I died to the throw, no big deal. Little punish, oh, I did not get the punish. 2-1, 2-1. I knew he was mashing from the previous interaction. Hit him again, 2-1. He didn't mash this time. That's not gonna deter me. Just because one time fails, doesn't mean you abandon the plan, okay? Just because they block one time doesn't mean, okay, we're on layer three, okay? No. The game is moving so fast that you should actually stay at the same layer and just alternate between doing nothing sometimes and doing something sometimes, okay? But if you keep jumping through the mind games, you don't know if your opponent is actually even paying attention, right? So he didn't match that time. I'm still going to do nothing. Now I have visual confirmation that he was doing it again. Let's play it all the way back, okay? He mashed there. He didn't mash there. Okay. Okay. He mashed there. So I'm getting a better idea intuitively. I'm not really counting it every single time, but I'm getting a better idea intuitively and doing nothing keeps me safe. He didn't mash that time. Nice. Good to know. He mashed that time. It just happened to be really safe. And then I get a nice sidestep punish on the heat smash. Okay. So hopefully that extremely exaggerated example makes it clear. This mind game is so good when you do nothing. And this is how plus frames work too. It'll happen less quickly because plus frame moves tend to be slower, right? A real plus frame moves tend to be a bit slower. You'll, uh, there'll be more space between the interactions. These mental frame moves work really fast because they come off of quick strings. Okay, but I wanted to really demonstrate how doing nothing is just so powerful and then suddenly doing a frame trap, okay? So in the Steve example, if you remember the Steve moves, all the way back here. All the way back here. What that will translate to on Steve's level is just doing the up back two over and over again and then doing nothing. And then when they finally think they're safe, you do up back two, back one, right? That is a very successful. And I wanted to highlight that again, this is not throwing shade. This is no kind of shaming, but that guy was a Raijin level player. So this is a technique that will be valuable from yellow ranks, even below yellow ranks, all the way through high level 
I want to emphasize that the true plus frames are what you want to lean towards, okay? Mental plus frames suck against low levels because they will mash regardless. They will mash regardless at low level, okay? But frames objectively dictate the rules of the road. No matter what level you're at, if you mash when the opponent has plus frames, you die. So this is the basis of all levels of play. This is why when you watch a high level Azucena, they will just do running 3-2 over and over and over again because the opponent is respecting the plus frame situation. So the attacker is playing very statistically safe by forcing them into that horrible situation over and over and over again. I'm just loading up the characters to demonstrate that while I keep rambling. Um, the last concept I want to cover is how to find these frame traps. Okay, so there are resources we used to use before the in-game frame data existed. I'm going to pull up those websites, but now that it's loaded in, let me show you what I was talking about here. If the opponent is just stand blocking over and over and over again, especially an Asian approach to the game, a Korean approach to the game, is to just keep the advantage situation. Plus five, plus five, plus five. You have to make a decision. I'm chilling. And the one time they do decide to make an decision, a decision, something even as innocent as a jab, right? Something as innocent as a jab can die to a down forward too. And then I get a combo. So true plus frames are better. Mental plus frames are still valuable. Let's talk about how to find these resources um, after we reinvite the timestamp jumpers. All right. Welcome back, timestamp jumpers. If you're here, no shame. Your time is valuable. I get it. Let's quickly run through everything. I do recommend jumping back to see the examples. If any of this is confusing, I spend a lot of time on it. I think it's, you know, I think it's pretty useful, but up to you. Um, we talked about uh, the level one, which was just doing frame traps on block. Okay, so Steve's up back three is a on block frame trap. They block the move. You get a counter hit attempt that is really statistically advantageous. Okay, because even if they jab in retaliation, your back one is now the same speed. We also talked about how to frame trap these other generic situations that are faster than a jab. Jump status moves happen here. Rage arts happen on frame eight. Armor and Heat Burst happens on frame 7, and parries and reversals are frame 5, with even more exceptions. Leroy has a frame 3 parry in stance. Yoshi's Flash is frame 6. If he puts his sword away, it's frame 8. And Xiaoyu's back one is actually also frame 8. So there are characters that can break these rules. There may be more in the future. We talked about leveling up your frame traps to handling on hit situations. So uh, Jin can frame trap off of his low down back 4 on hit. His 2-1 on hit also frame traps his counter hit launching mid. High level players will even frame trap on jabs and down forward ones. These small pokes, they'll see it hit and do their frame trap. I showed a drill how to handle that. Check out the timestamp below to get there. What if your frame traps aren't working? We talked about how mind games work in fighting games. They're usually four layers and layer four is just really looping around uh, back to layer one. So layer the layered mind game for frame traps is you do the plus frame move, you do the frame trap, they mash and die. Layer two is your opponent just decides to block and now they have advantage. So layer three is playing off of the read that they're just going to block. We give a few options for that and there's actually a replay before that demonstrates these concepts. Please jump there if you'd like to see that replay. And then layer four is they are tired of all these mind games. They just mash to stop your mix up, which takes you back to here. You do the plus frame move, you do the frame trap, they mash, they die. And I was saying that before Tekken Emperor, even in Tekken King, I was able to just do frame traps over and over and over again. Obviously, there's more to do to actually rank up. You have to survive their offense and their frame traps and their other moves. But combining do nothing and do the plus frame move is extremely, extremely effective. Mental frame traps. The mind game works similar to the layering here but it's built on a different concept. Mental frames work because some strings have extensions that have high or medium reward. So Jin's 214 was our example. It is a counter hit knockdown. Azusena actually, who we have on screen, also has this example. Down forward 1-4 is minus seven. But if they retaliate, she has a counter hit launching high. This is a full combo, right? So, the mind game here exists on the idea that your opponent might block because they're afraid of the extension. Hence, at low level, these are worthless. Your mental frames are worthless. Okay, at low level, just do the string. Add a little delay so they think your string is over. 
don't bother with this if you're in like red rank even in purple rank even in blue rank you can just run a string and kill people you can just run a frame trap and kill people you could do this and just kill people with your frame trap okay i promise be very careful with these just do the string layer two is just like what we saw in the pre in the real frame traps the actual positive frames your opponent just decides to block I have to set Dragon off to stand block to demonstrate this. But if your opponent just decides to block, you give up advantage. You're now at minus. It's their turn. They can run their offense. Just like with the real plus frames, you have extra mind games here. If your opponent is just going to block, even though you have minus, you know, you know they're going to block, right? So just do a mix up. You can do nothing. You can run it again. And if they run, if they get impatient and you have a good read, then you can run it again and kill them. Okay, layer four goes all the way back to layer one. They mash because they're tired of you doing this partial string nonsense. All you have to do is delay the string or do the frame trap and they die. Now, last topic is finding your frame traps. Again, before we actually had in-game frame data, people would test and compile frame data on their own and it would uh, be put on websites. So what they did here and what I want to demonstrate is, boom, demonstrate. I want to show you one of these websites. This is RB Norway, and there's another good one called Gepopotamus. So these are really, really the best of the best resources, I think, for tech and frame data. Did I leave RB Norway? What did I do here? rbnorway.org, gepopotamus.info. Okay, great. English on the right. I don't know how I griefed that. I, I got clearly confused. I'm doing this on OBS, so I, it's all really small to me. Tech and aid frame data. I'm going to show you RB Norway for, first. Forced. I'm going to show you RB Norway first because it's the quickest and the easiest. And it's, uh, they have the most data right now. So let's say we're looking at Jin because that's what we demonstrated in the first part of the video. And here we have an amazing resource, okay? It has every move in the order of the basic move list with all of the frame data on startup, on block, on hit, and on counter hit. To find your frame traps, you can actually just click here and sort by it. So we can go block frames. We have to get through all the heat stuff at first. So these are the minus frames, as you can see. This is a great way to start looking for punishment data, by the way, a little trick there. Uh, separate video though, let's flip it again. And now we have all the plus frames and these are the moves that come with it. So this is how you can start exploring what plus frames to look for so look for plus frames is step one of this uh right here then you're gonna look for counter hit launchers you'll find this in character guides you'll find this watching pro play or watching high level replays honestly at low level replays you'll probably see more counter hits okay so look for these uh the resources are very available um take some time to find these for sure but the plus frames themselves you'll find here this will let you get through it without testing everything uh, also, as we sh uh, saw in this video, you'll want to look at the hit frames, okay? Look at the hit frames, and those are also valuable. The first few moves are like, uh, I think these heat-specific mechanics, maybe? Yeah. And then, uh, or some are stance-specific. So Zen 4 is the dive kick from stance for Jin. Um, but yes, these are the other moves. It's a complete list. Definitely use this. Um, Gepopotamus, by the way, is also a good resource. It just doesn't have every character right now. But the benefit to Gepopotamus is they have these extra details that uh, they don't tell you in the game at all. So check this out. Um, stuff like this. Combo from the second on counter hit. So you know that if the second hit hits, the third one is guaranteed. Can be delayed up to nine frames. But the combo can be delayed up to six frames. So this is insane, insane detail, right? insane detail that's really really useful especially if you play at a really high level all right um but for beginners if you're just finding your frame data in the first place rb norway is more than sufficient and they even have notes here right so um Gepopotamus is where i found it first but clearly rb norway has stepped up and this is awesome to see now some things to note sometimes you have low reward frame traps so lily down four three is an example it's only plus three on block your opponent's in crouch which is nice but she doesn't really get a counter hit launch or knockdown attempt she really gets like a one two right um that's fine you don't have to get a launcher off your counter hit 
Usually the character has something else to compensate. In Lily's case, she has really good sidesteps. So a sidestep launch is more likely to happen with this frame advantage than a straight counter hit launch, okay? Sometimes your frame traps won't even be perfect. So Reyna's forward four is only plus two. I'll pull this up visually while I talk about it. <coughs> Reyna's forward four is only plus two, but it forces your opponent into crouch. So even though it's not a perfect frame trap for say her down forward one, which is 13 frames, her 1-1-2 will trap most retaliation, okay? So just because it's not a counter hit launching frame trap doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It's still really good, okay? So let me just show you this last example and this is how we'll wrap up the video, okay? <clears throat> I have to set Dragonov's punishment settings to actually the crouching ones down here. And I'm gonna select his while rising four. This is his fastest one. I do forward four. His is 11 frames. So my 1-1 one, one will trap it. Let me go into stance and keep attacking. <clears throat> but if I try to do a down forward one, which is 13 frames, it loses or trades, right? And I get nothing off of this trade. I can even die. But that's fine. Usually there's other counterplay like sidesteps. So if you can't sidestep in this particular situation, then it's a bit tough. But most of these wall standing moves will give you some kind of counterplay, right? So here you would sidewalk left and then whiff punish that, thing, uh, that move. So usually crouching, forcing crouch won't give you as many frames, but it's still super valuable for this reason, especially if you can actually do electrics. If not, you could just do Reyna's down forward too. Very sufficient. One thing that does get annoying with these punishes uh, is if they just do a down jab, right? So say Dragonov blocks this move into crouch, he just does a down jab, right? That can get annoying because it's 10 frames fast and this whole one, one thing doesn't really work if they're just ducking underneath, right? But just like with the last one, you have sidesteps, down forward two won't launch, so you'll have to hop kick. You can just hop kick right away, because it jumps over. Um, you can also back dash and whiff punish. So here, that's a good option. It's a heat engager. I have heat turned off right now just for speed. But you have lots of options. So just because your frame trap isn't perfect doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You probably have advantage that the game or the designers understood you have. It's just up to you to find it. Or be like me, watch better players. They'll help you find it out. This has been a long video. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much. Please leave a like. Please leave a comment. And again, you got nothing to say, leave an emoji. But I'm sure you might have some questions. Please leave them below. I do try to read the comments. And uh, for this kind of content, please subscribe to see more. That's all I have for you today. Catch you in the next one. Peace.